They'll be shown around by Prince Andrew, who's the Queen's third child, her second son, and he had his marriage in Westminster Abbey to um, Sarah Ferguson. Um, they're no longer married, but they had their wedding there. Very interesting that the president will be, um, obviously, as many do, putting a wreath of respect around the tomb of the unknown warrior. Um, and also, we heard from you, Jim, that he will be visiting the tomb of Stephen Hawking. This is also a big deal and caught me a little bit by surprise, because what is Stephen Hawking if not the repository of facts, of science, of evidence, and the real based world? which the president is often um, taking pot shots at. So I think that's a really important moment um, to know that he's going to be putting a wreath there. And I think it's really important also that this visit is happening at a time where we will be commemorating in just three days the historic D-Day landing, 75 years since General Eisenhower um, was the, the commander of the naval fleet that took off from Portsmouth and then basically invaded occupied France and started the beginning of the end of the Nazi domination of Europe. It's a massively important time. And for those who want to look you know, fondly and with positivity on the relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom, it couldn't be more fortuitous, this timing. And then, of course, you have all the other stuff around it that we can talk about, if you like, the politics. Dominic Thomas with us as well. We should, we should note that Westminster Abbey is a resting place for, for many prominent Britons. Stephen Hawking, of course, Charles Darwin, uh, Mary Queen of Scots, uh, and, and as Christiane noted, uh, of course, the tomb of the unknown soldier. So topical right now. D Dominic Thomas, this is a good trip for the American president. He enjoys the welcome. He enjoys the pomp and circumstance. How about for the British? Because it happens at a very divisive time in the country. Uh, the debate over Brexit, uh, a, an outgoing prime minister, lack of clarity about who follows, will there be another referendum? Uh, Donald Trump, a divisive figure on that topic. So is this visit good for Britain at this time? Well, it, Jim, it very much depends on uh, the person to whom uh, you are speaking. Uh, it is clear that for uh, the Conservative Party, this is a, a moment of, uh, of transition and change. They are facing a sort of existential um, rethinking as to the direction they need to go in, very much like the Republican uh, Party in the United States since uh, President Trump uh, was elected. Uh, Boris Johnson um, announced that he would be uh, running uh, for Theresa May's uh, position today. And so he clearly sees some advantage to uh, all the news that's been swirling around um, President Trump's uh, visit. Uh, when you speak to others, uh, many, of course, um, have not hidden the fact that they are concerned about uh, the Trump presidency and all that he goes about representing. And uh, others have been emphasizing the historical nature of this relationship, in many ways reminding people that the UK and the United States um, have been around a long time, have worked together uh, historically and will continue to do so. But the 75th anniversary uh, of the end of the, uh, of the, of the D-Day uh, launchings from Portsmouth was an important moment. Uh, it was followed up, of course, by the establishment of this liberal democratic order, the creation of the European Union and so on. And one cannot underestimate the fact that this new order, this new international order, has been put into question by President Trump's uh, presidency, um, his favoring of bilateral uh, agreements, and the ways in which his critique um, of the European Union, of NATO, uh, and the way in which he has weighed in on this divisive mm -hmm. Brexit issue is weakening this international order. You know, Christian, what strikes me is for this America first president, right, um, how important our allies are. And he knows that. And he's making this visit as part of that. Your great interview with German Chancellor Angela Merkel mm -hmm. just last week showed that as well. Let's get to that in a moment. But let's listen. As the president contemplates the unknown warrior, on the pillar to the left of our picture hangs the Congressional Medal of Honor given by the people. Okay. That the grave of the yeah. unknown warrior, as it is known there, that remembers all who died in the First World War. And as Christiane mentioned, of course, the importance of that uh, just days before the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings, uh, where the president will also make a visit later on this trip. Yeah, he will. Christiane, your thoughts? 
Well, look, you know, he does enjoy these somber and historic moments. And who could not be reflective when they stand inside Westminster Abbey? It's known as the Queen's Church. It is the repository of so many historic figures, both militarily, both in terms of statesmen, both in terms of, of, uh, of scientists, as we've seen, and, and just the big, huge, towering figures throughout um, the hundreds and hundreds of years of British civilization that they've just been, you know, putting, it, putting those people to rest there. You're seeing him with the dean of Westminster Abbey there and also to the, uh, to the left of the screen, Prince Andrew, who, as I said, is the Queen's third child, her second son, and who himself was a, uh, a military pilot of helicopters during the Falkland War. So he has, that's the early 80s, he has some military experience himself, um, as does, of course, Prince Harry, who is not there, but as we remember, he fought in um, Afghanistan. And the whole military tradition is huge with the British royal family. That is what they do. They go to officer school um, when they graduate from high school. And that is the, the sort of the, the, the framework with which they conduct their public service, certainly mm. the men. And we know also Princess Anne as well has a, a certain role in that regard. And the Queen herself was um, helping out and, and in uniform during the home... Yep. Uh, battle during World War II. But I think, look, um, you have a situation now where Britain, as its role on the international stage, will diminish because of Brexit, as it unhooks itself from all the powerful alliances and trade deals and intelligence and military and all these other issues that makes Britain so punch above its weight for so many decades since the Second World War, now it's going to be diminished slightly on the world stage. So it needs to keep a massively close relationship with, you know, the great big uncle over the seas, who is historically the provider of security for the transatlantic alliance. Yeah. Um, now President Trump is questioning his... Um, uh, continued intelligence sharing if Britain goes ahead with uh, having Huawei... Uh, mm -hmm. enter some of its IT and technological developments in the future. The president doesn't like that at all. He'll be discussing that with Prime Minister May. You mentioned Angela Merkel. She, of course, represents the country that was defeated in World War II, and yet she has been the key defender of mm -hmm. the liberal world order and says that, that, you know, we cannot continue without that multilateralism and respect of all these economic and security treaties. Yes, uh, Poppy, go I'm ahead. I'm just going to take a moment and listen into this. Joining us, the President and the First Lady at Westminster Abbey, an official visit. They've just laid a wreath at the grave of the unknown warrior, remembering all who died in the First World War. Uh, we have Dominic Thomas with us, in addition to Christiane Amanport. Dominic, we mentioned a couple times on this broadcast how Trump is only the third U.S. president to receive the honor of a state visit to the U.K. Of course, there have been a lot of U.S. presidents with very close relationships with the U.K. going back decades. Why? Why? Is he only the third to receive this honor? Well, that's a, a, an interesting question. I think at this particular moment in history, as soon as uh, Prime Minister May uh, took over from David Cameron uh, in the aftermath of the 2016 
uh, Brexit uh, referendum, uh, she realized that strategically this relationship with the United States and that the discussion and that the spreading of this vision of a kind of global Britain engaging in these bilateral relations was going to be important. And to that extent, the Atlantic relationship became the incontrovertible relationship uh, for the UK. And so very early on in her prime ministership, she was eager uh, to court uh, uh, President Trump and uh, to, to use Donald Trump as a way to, to bolster uh, the arguments uh, in favor uh, of Brexit as they were uh, heading into negotiations uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the European Union. And so, yes, you're absolutely right, though, that historically all, French, all American um, presidents um, have visited the United Kingdom, but these state visits have been reserved uh, for those partners um, uh, and at a moments in history, uh, whether it's George W. Bush or President Barack Obama, when the UK has wanted to, to go to that extra uh, length to honor uh, that Atlantic uh, relationship and to make that particular point. And for President Donald Trump, this kind of um, reception uh, has been so incredibly uh, important uh, to him.